Hi there, Chemistry 11. So today, as promised, we're starting a new unit. Uh, the topic of the unit is stoichiometry. This is unit seven. Um, as I've said before, I, I kind of view this as the heart of Chemistry 11. You're taking information you've uh, learned or relearned about use of significant figures, um, uh, unit conversions, it's huge here, balanced chemical equations, um, and uh, the mole concept, as well as uh, the molar volume of gases. It's all coming together in this unit here. So in that way, I view this as one of the most important units of the course. Now, uh, it's uh, got four lessons in it. I'm actually going to cover two of the lessons today because one of the lessons is really brief and conceptual. What is stoichiometry? Well, I've got the notes written up here if you wish to use these. So, uh, the worksheet for this is due Wednesday. You guys have had a fair bit of time without really much to do. Um, stoichiometry is the relationship between the amount of reactants used in a chemical reaction and the amount of products that are created. Um, some time ago in one of the videos, I said to you that uh, a good experimental chemist uh, is often also a very good cook. They appreciate the importance of adding the right amount of ingredients in any recipe. If they uh, overdo one of the ingredients versus others, especially, say, in baking, um, you can end up with an extremely different uh, result than you might have hoped for. Baking is actually a particularly good example because in the case of baking, they are actually chemical reactions that you're, that you're um, putting into play. Uh, the uh, consumption of sugar by yeast or the decomposition of the, hydro, of the bicarbonate ion to make CO2 when you're making something like a, a cornbread. So uh, what I'm trying to say here is that the amounts matter relative to each other for your reactants. Uh, if you add too much of a given reactant, then that reactant might not get, all get used. Some of a reactant might be left over. If you, um, which means that you're gonna left, the, the products you'll be left with uh, will be a kind of a mixture of the desired products and some of the reactants. Uh, especially if one of the reactants is a hazardous or a, a dangerous reactant, you don't want any of it left behind. So stoichiometry uh, is a way of correcting for that. With stoichiometry, we are using balanced chemical equations and we're drawing on the mole concept hugely. So specifically with a balanced chemical equation, let's go back to, to what it all um, is telling us. The worksheet I'm giving you has a balanced chemical equation for the first question, in fact, for every question. When I was younger, and you won't remember this, it used to be that if you went to the uh, gas station, you could buy leaded gas or unleaded gas. Uh, eventually what happened is, you know, drivers, well, citizens got tired of the idea or uncomfortable with the idea that when they were burning their gasoline, uh, there was a, an oxidation reaction that was releasing um, uh, that, that was releasing lead into the air in the form of lead oxide. Uh, that lead is dangerous to the environment. And so lead of gasoline is no longer a thing. But uh, in the past, they've used lead, specifically tetraethyl lead, as what's called an anti-knock agent uh, in, in, um, in gasoline to make the motors run more smoothly. They use different methods now. The balanced chemical equation for that is shown here. Uh, 2 tetraethyl lead plus 27 oxygen makes 2 lead 2 oxide plus 16 carbon dioxide plus uh, 20 H2O molecules. This is just one component of the gasoline and it itself is involved in that combustion reaction because these ethyl groups that are attached to your uh, lead ion in, a, in a, a kind of an ion complex um, they themselves are involved in the combustion. They get burned up. So it, it's got a lot of uh, numbers, and let's go back to those numbers. These are, again, called coefficients. The coefficients in a reaction equation tell you the relative chemical amounts 
that are being used of your reactants and the relative chemical amounts that are being created in your products. From a balanced chemical equation, specifically from this one, we can make statements like 27 moles of oxygen are consumed for each, I should say, two moles of tetraethyl lead. There is a 27 to 2 ratio. You could also say, make statements like for each four molecules of carbon dioxide that are created, five molecules are created of H2O. How did I get that? Well, let's go back to the ratios. The coefficient for carbon dioxide is 16. The coefficient for water is 20. So there is a um, 4 to 5 ratio. 16 to 20 is the same as a 4 to 5 ratio. You could make this statement for any unit of chemical amount. The unit of chemical amount that you started with was the molecule or the particle. Then we expanded and recognized that in chemistry, we're talking about very large amounts of those particles, and so we brought in the concept of the mole. 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of anything is a mole. So we can say for every two moles of tetraethyl lead, um, 27 moles of oxygen are used. We can make the statement using the language of the mole, but we can also make the statement using the language of individual particles. It doesn't matter as long as you keep your units consistent from one calculation to another. And of course, you can do unit conversions to go from moles to particles, and we're going to look at that in a moment. But the key learning piece here for that lesson one is that there's a connection between uh, this concept of stoichiometry and balanced chemical equations, and you, you have to understand those ratios as ratios of chemical amounts. I suggest you, if, if you're, maybe to get some more comfort with that, you do some of the problems from the, um, from the textbook for lesson one. Going to lesson two, I have a worksheet for that. Four questions, two sides to a single piece of paper. I'm going to go through some of the questions, 1A and 1B, and then on the other side, 2A and 2B, and I hope this gives you some comfort with this. So here's the answer for question 1A. there okay so let me run you through it you can obviously pause the video there if you want and put down the full answer that i've written here on the board i'm going to walk you through it first of all the first thing you're going to do at least the first thing i do is i write down the balanced chemical equation and that reminds me brings to mind the coefficients which reminds me of what the um molar ratios are for this reaction. You're always going to cross the mole bridge for these kinds of problems. In other words, you are always going to be calculating the chemical amount at a certain point because you're converting moles of one into moles of another in your calculation. You will always be calculating molar uh, amount, chemical amount. So that's really what you can expect to be doing first in these chemical equations. So we want to know, the question is, if we have zero, uh, 100.0 grams of uh, lead oxide that are created, what volume of oxygen gas is going to be produced? When I do these questions, what I do is I figure out, okay, what are the calculations I'm gonna need to do and then I write down all the calculations without solving a single calculation. I write them down one row for the first calculation, another row for the second, another row for the third. That prevents my making um, rounding errors. You do the first calculation, you keep that value in your calculator, and then you go to the second row and you do the next calculation. If you make a plan for these, if you have a clearly laid out plan for solving these problems, from personal experience I can tell you that they're easier. So let's look at what I did for this question. The first thing I did is I said, okay, we have 100.0 grams of lead oxide. How many uh, moles is that? Well, 100.0 grams, well, I guess we need the molar mass of lead 2 oxide. And that's what I calculated over here. 
on the side in general. I've been doing those molar mass calculations on the side. Here's where you go, want to go to your periodic table. Molar mass of lead, 207.2 grams per mole. Molar mass of oxygen, 16 grams per mole. And there's one of each of those atoms in a formula unit. So our molar mass, 223.2 grams per mole. We take that molar mass and it becomes the denominator in a fraction. 100 grams divided by 223.2 grams per mole gives us this figure right here. 0.448 moles of lead 2 oxide. Keeping that value in your calculator, what you then do is you can make a statement like this. What I'm pointing out right here is the number of moles of oxygen equals the number of moles of lead 2 oxide multiplied by the moles of O2 per the moles of lead 2 oxide. That's a molar ratio. Okay? So then I take that value that I got. 0.448 moles of lead 2 oxide. I'm multiplying that by 27 moles of oxygen per 2 moles of PBO. I didn't even put moles in my ratio. It doesn't really have to be moles. It could be molecules. It could be any chemical amount. I just made it 27 uh, O2 over 2 PBO. And I get 6.05 moles of oxygen. But they didn't ask for moles. What we're doing here is we've, we're crossing that mole bridge. We put our foot on that mole bridge when we calculated the, the chemical amount of lead 2 oxide. We are going to exit the mole bridge now that we're calculating the chemical amount of oxygen. And now we need to do one more unit conversion. We're taking the chemical amount of oxygen and finding what's the volume that that corresponds to. Here we are drawing on um, unit 5. We're using molar volume of a gas. We take, here's the calculation right here. It says volume of oxygen equals the number of moles of oxygen times the molar volume of a gas, which is the same hydrogen, helium, any gas has the same molar volume at STP. That's unit 5. And that is 6.05 moles of oxygen times 22.4 liters per mole. And that leads me to this calculation of 135 liters of oxygen. Now, I saw a different resource that said 22.7 liters per mole, but your textbook does say 22.4. Question 2B is, um, they're asking a different question. Uh, let's, excuse me, question 1B. Question is, what combined volume, excuse me, uh, how many molecules of CO2 are formed when 1.00 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of tetraethyl lead are burned? So when I do this problem, I'm first of all figuring out the molar mass of tetraethyl lead. And I get that as over here, 207.2. Plus, so let's see how many carbons. There's eight carbons. Two times four is eight. I get that from the formula. And 20 hydrogens, right? There's five hydrogens in each, in each ethyl. Multiplied by four ethyls is 20 hydrogens. I add all those up, and I get 323.2 grams per mole is the molar mass of tetraethyl lead. Then... I say, well, how many moles is that? 1.00 times 10 to the negative 6 grams of tetraethyl lead. I was lazy here. I just put TEL. Divided by 323.2 grams per mole of that is, is the molar mass. And I get 3.09 times 10 to the negative 9 moles of tetraethyl lead. That's line one. And remember, what I've done here, personally, that works for me, is I wrote down all of what would be my calculations before I even take the calculator out. How many moles of carbon dioxide um, are being formed here? Well, and this is going to be the other side of the mole bridge, right? This here was stepping onto the mole bridge, getting the moles of tetraethyl lead. Now I'm going to step off the mole bridge, or go on the last step of it, by finding the moles of CO2. You can, you're always going to be doing this, converting moles of one into moles of another, reactants or products. So 
I get 3.09 times 10 to the negative 9 moles of TEL times 16 CO2 per 2 TEL, or 8. And that gives me 2.48 times 10 to the negative 8 moles of CO2. So far, so good. Now I need to convert to particles, because that's what they asked us to do. This right here, big N av, is Avogadro's number. You might remember that from Unified. 5. The particles of CO2 is Avogadro's number times the moles of CO2. That's 6.02 times 10 to the 23 mol molecules per mole multiplied by those moles of CO2. And my number, uh, answer in a box, 1.49 times 10 to the 16 molecules of CO2. Notice that I'm really always doing the same thing. I'm starting with the balanced chemical equation, recognizing that, that it's a statement of the ratio of moles used in a chemical reaction. I'm calculating the number of moles for what I'm given, and then I'm doing a molar conversion to what I want to know. And then I'm doing a further conversion that they're asking for, be it um, particles, be it uh, mass, be it volume. Let's look at questions 2A and B. Question 2A uh, involves something that maybe some of you have seen before, like footage of it at least. Here I'll, I'll, go through, I'll, I'll show you the answers that I put up. Here's for 2A across. Pause the screen if you want to use this work. Moving across. There, this is 2A. And that's my molar mass. Those are my molar mass calculations, by the way. 2B, right here. Moving across. If you want to use this, you don't have to. There, and there, my answer. Okay, I'm going to run through this anyways. What they're asking is the following. Nitromethane, a fuel used in some drag racers, combusts according to the following equation. 4CH3NO2 plus 3O2 makes 4CO2 plus 6H2O plus 2N2. In other words, 4 carbon dioxide, 6 water, and 2 nitrogen gas. They're asking first, what mass of H2O is produced when 0 0.150 grams of um, CH3NO2 are burned, or I call NM, nitromethane. Well, the first thing I did is I calculated the molar mass of nitromethane. If you want to calculate moles, you need molar mass. If you're given a mass, you still need molar mass to get those moles. And that's what I did over here. Molar mass of nitromethane. It's got one carbon, so 12. Three hydrogens, that's 3.0 grams. 14 is your is from oxygen, it's from, excuse me, from nitrogen, and we get 32 from oxygen. Two times 16 is 32. I got 61.0 grams per mole as the molar mass of nitromethane. I'm gonna use that right here. In the middle of the screen, you see it? The number of moles of nitromethane is 0 0.150 grams of nitromethane divided by 61.0 grams per mole of nitromethane is 2.46 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, moles. So that was stepping onto the mole bridge. I calculated the, I'm calculating the chemical amount for what I've given enough information to do. Step one, right? Now I'm going to use the molar ratio. I say that the moles of water will equal the moles of nitromethane times the moles of water per nitromethane. Well, then I put it in. The value that I got from the first line, 2.46 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of nitromethane times 6 H2O per 4 nitromethane. Again, these are molar ratios. They come from the balanced chemical equation. 6 over 4 is 1.5. And I got 3.69 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of water. Remember when I did this, by the way, just a reminder, is I figure out what are all my calculations going to be, and only then do I do the actual calculations with the calculator, and that avoids rounding errors. Then I want to know, I have my moles of water, I need mass. The mass of water is the molar mass of water times the moles of water. That's unit 5. And I get 18 grams per mole 
times 3.69 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of water equals 6.64 times 10 to the negative 2 grams of H2O. That problem's done. Question 2b, they're asking, that's a little different. What combined volumes of carbon dioxide and nitrogen gas are produced when 0 0.316 grams of CH3NO2 is burned, your nitromethane? This is handy because we've already calculated the, um, the molar mass of nitromethane. So we can take that right away. We can say, well, the number of moles of nitromethane we see in the middle of the screen right here equals 0 0.316 grams divided by 61.0 grams per mole. And that's 5.18 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of nitromethane, NM. All right, now we need to find out the moles of gases. Notice in the balanced chemical equation, I'm, I'm saying this because in the balanced chemical equation, they give the states. The state of carbon dioxide, gas. State of water, liquid. The state of nitrogen gas, gas. So I'm just saying the number of moles of gases. There's four of one and two of another. How do I know that? I know that from the reaction coefficients. Four for CO2, two for N2. All right. The number of moles of gases, and here's where things get kind of interesting, is number of moles of CO2 plus the number of moles of N2 per mole of NM. And again, I could be saying, I could be using the language of molecules here. I'm just saying moles because, well, we're working with moles. We're about to step off the molar bridge. We're calculating 5.18 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of nitromethane times, and look at this, in brackets, 4 plus 2. The 4 came for the... Um, uh, was for the carbon dioxide and the two was for the nitrogen gas. Four plus two, two moles divided by four of NM. It's 1.5 again as a fraction. Equals 7.77 times 10 to the power of negative three moles of gases in general. Collectively moles of CO2 and NO2. All right. Now again, we need to do one final conversion. We need to figure out the gases. Remember that any gas at STP has the same molar volume, 22.4 liters per mole. So I take that figure here, and we say the volume of gases, middle of the screen, equals the moles of gases times 22.4 liters per mole of any gas is 7.77 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of gases multiplied by 22.4 liters per mole equals 0 0.174 liters. So those are some example stoichiometry problems. Uh, really, that's, that's almost half the worksheet I've gone through there. And I've gone through every different kind of um, thing that you might want to convert to. Because here, we're converting to, mol to grams, to mass. We're converting to um, volume, and we're converting to particles. Later on, we're going to look at what things look like when we're working with solutions. Uh, I hope that this helps and um, check out the other resources I recommend as well, as well as please make sure that you do the reading for this worksheet, and, um, and then I'll talk to you later. Bye for now.